Welcome to the public hearing for the State Road 5 U.S. Highway 1 resurfacing design project from Woodland Avenue to the Flagler County line in Volusia County, Florida. The purpose of this hearing is to receive public input and to give interested persons an opportunity to express their views concerning the location and conceptual design of the proposed improvements. FDOT staff are available to discuss the plans and answer questions. Public participation is encouraged and solicited without regard to race, color, religion, sex, age, national origin, disability, or family status. The purpose of this public hearing is to share information about the proposed resurfacing and to serve as an official forum to give you the opportunity to express your opinions and concerns about this project. In November 2010, Florida Senate Bill 1842 was enacted, which requires the department to hold a public hearing whenever modifications to property access are proposed along a state highway. Hearings must be held 180 days prior to finalization of the design of the project. This public hearing is being held relative to state project number 439136-1. In addition to milling and resurfacing the roadway, the FDOT is designing this project to improve safety by filling in sidewalk gaps, evaluating the need to correct guardrail deficiencies, widening the outside shoulder on the northbound lane to accommodate bicycles and implement access changes in some areas. No additional right-of-way will be required. This public hearing was advertised consistent with all federal and state requirements. Letters were sent to 22 elected officials, 19 government partners, 17 agencies, six homeowner associations and businesses, and 540 property owners and stakeholders. A newspaper display ad was published in the Daytona Beach News Journal on Sunday, November 18, 2018, and again on Sunday, December 2, 2018. An ad was also published in the Florida Administrative Register. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting either the Florida Department of Transportation District 5 office or the Tallahassee office. This contact information is also provided on a sign displayed near the sign-in table. This design improvement project is proposed for State Road 5 U.S. Highway 1 from south of Woodland Avenue to the Flagler County line in Ormond Beach, Volusia County, a distance of approximately seven miles. Collision data was reviewed from a safety study conducted from 2010 to 2014. This roadway is considered a high crash roadway segment. There were 389 accidents recorded between 2010 and 2014 with 18 fatalities and 352 injuries. The project is based off of a request from the Florida Department of Transportation, District 5 Pavement Management and Maintenance Office. The intent of the project is to resurface the roadway and include necessary roadside and safety improvements in accordance with the FDOT design manual. State Road 5 US 1 is a four-lane divided urban principal arterial roadway. The typical section includes two 12-foot travel lanes in each direction, four-foot paved outside shoulders, and two-foot paved inside shoulders with a 10-foot total shoulder width. There is a 40-foot depressed landscaped median. The proposed typical section changes to accommodate bicycle keyholes 
within the 45 miles per hour zones. A keyhole is a bicycle lane that is placed between a through lane and the adjacent right turn lane, bus bay, or parking lane. The configuration will include two 12-foot travel lanes with a 5-foot bicycle keyhole and a 12-foot auxiliary lane on the outside. The paved outside shoulder will vary up to 5 feet. The inside shoulder will be 2 feet wide. Along with milling and resurfacing the roadway, this project includes various safety improvements such as sidewalk additions, reconstruction and filling in gaps in some areas, curb ramp reconstruction, drainage improvements, and evaluating the need to correct guardrail deficiencies. Additional safety improvements include widening to accommodate bicycle keyholes, the extension of turn lanes as needed, traffic signal upgrades, pedestrian lighting improvements, access management changes, signing and pavement marking, and peer protection replacement at the I-95 overpass. There are 10 existing utilities along the project corridor. Utility companies have been contacted, and the FDOT is coordinating with each company to minimize impacts and avoid construction delays. The City of Ormond Beach Fire Station number 93 is located directly on the project corridor. The project team will coordinate with emergency responders throughout project design and construction to ensure response times will not be limited. Now we'll discuss access management. Access management is the planning and control of the location, spacing, design, and operation of driveways, median openings, and street connections to a roadway. Access management designates where and how vehicles enter and exit a roadway, helps protect public investment in roadways, and improves public safety by preserving mobility, reducing delays, and minimizing crashes. The illustration shows an accident that could have been prevented by modifying the median or providing a barrier where the westbound automobile is trying to turn into or cross the eastbound travel lane. There is a full median opening at the US 1 Hernandez Avenue intersection with no restrictions on left turns to and from US 1. Hernandez Avenue meets US-1 within a curve, and the road transitions from a rural section to an urban section. There were six crashes at this intersection during a collision analysis between April 1, 2013 and March 30, 2016. The crashes were caused by vehicles attempting a westbound left turn from Hernandez Avenue. The full median opening at Hernandez Avenue will be converted to a bi-directional median opening for improved safety to be consistent with the urban section of the US-1 corridor and to meet the access management standards from Rule Chapter 14-97, Florida Administrative Code. Vehicles on Hernandez Avenue wishing to travel south on US-1 will turn north to Rosewood Avenue and make a U-turn to go south. Vehicles on the west side of US-1 wishing to travel north will turn south to Highland Avenue to complete a U-turn. There is a full median opening at the US-1 Rosewood Avenue intersection with no restrictions on left turns to and from US-1. This intersection has a fifth leg at Walnut Street. Rosewood Avenue does not intersect at US-1 with a 90-degree angle. Due to the existing intersection configuration, 
Drivers may not have a clear line of sight to northbound vehicles on US-1. There were five crashes at this intersection during a collision analysis between April 1, 2013 and March 30, 2016. Three were left turn collisions with one fatality. In the fatal crash, the driver attempted a left turn from Rosewood Avenue onto southbound US-1. In the other two left turn crashes, the sight distance for the northbound left turning driver was limited by a truck in the southbound left turn lane. The full median opening at Rosewood Avenue will have left turn lanes to provide a positive offset and will be converted to a bi-directional median opening for improved safety. To be consistent with the urban section of the US-1 corridor and to meet the access management standards from Rule Chapter 14-97 Florida Administrative Code. Vehicles wishing to travel south on US-1 will turn north to Kenilworth Avenue and make a U-turn to go south. Vehicles on the west side of US-1 wishing to travel north will turn south to Hernandez Avenue to complete a U-turn. You can download a copy of the Florida Department of Transportation's Access Management Brochure for more information. Go to the website at www.dot.state.fl.us and type Access Management Brochure in the search box at the upper right-hand corner of the home page. This project has an 18-month design schedule. We are currently completing the Phase 2 or 60% plans and will be moving into the Phase 3 plans after this public hearing. The plans will be completed and submitted to the Florida Department of Transportation in June 2019, and the project will be let for construction in September 2019. For more information about this project, please visit www.cflroads.com. This website is the FDOT's living platform to keep you and the public informed of ongoing and future projects. You are encouraged to visit this website, which contains the links to easy access to online information and to stay current with the status of the project. Once you have accessed the project website, you will be able to view the current project schedule details, project contact information, and access project files such as this presentation. Type the project number 439136-1 in the search box at the top of the page. Then click on Go. When the new page opens, click on the project file name. We encourage you to share your comments with us. There are many different ways you can submit your comments. Discuss your comments and concerns with a member of the project team. Fill out a comment form and drop it in the comments box at the comments table. Take a comment form with you and mail it to the address shown on the form. Email your comments to the FDOT project manager. Use the Ask a Question button on the CFL Roads website under the project manager's contact information. All comments received by December 21, 2018 will become part of the official public record for this hearing. After this presentation, we will collect speaker request cards from anyone wishing to make a verbal statement. It is important that we have your information on a speaker card for the public record. Because it is very important for us to hear from those who wish to speak, we will not be responding to questions during the public comment period. Once the comment period is finished, project staff will be available to answer your questions. If you have questions or would like more information, 
you may contact FDOT Project Manager Marcus Lazicki by mail, telephone, or email. Thank you for your interest in this project and for taking time to attend this public hearing. We will now call upon those who have turned in speaker cards. If you have not filled out a speaker card but wish to speak, please hold up your hand and a member of the project team will bring one to you. When your name is called, please come forward. Then state your name and address into the microphone. If you represent an organization, municipality, or other public body, please provide that information as well. We ask that you limit your comments to two minutes. Again, the project team will not be answering questions during this portion of the public hearing. Members of the project team will be available after the formal comment period to answer your questions on a one-on-one -on -one basis.